In this tutorial, we'll be demonstrating how to use one of Montana Molecular's live cell-based assays. Montana Molecular offers a number of cell-based assays that detect important signaling pathways involving cyclic AMP, diacylglycerol, PIP2, cyclic GMP, calcium, and cell stress. In today's experiment, we'll be using the CADIS assay. CADIS is a genetically encoded fluorescent sensor that detects the second messenger cyclic AMP. However, this tutorial outlines the general transduction protocol that can be used for all of Montana Molecular's assays. All of Montana Molecular's assay kits contain the following general reagents. The sensor BACMAM stock, the HDAC inhibitor sodium butyrate, a receptor control, and an agonist that activates the provided receptor control. BACMAM is an excellent delivery vehicle and can transduce a myriad of different cell types, such as standard cell lines, primary neurons, and stem cells. It's quite stable and has a long shelf life when stored properly. Finally, it's a BSL-1 reagent and does not replicate in human cells. HDAC inhibitors prevent gene silencing and result in higher and prolonged expression. In addition to sodium butyrate, we recommend valproic acid and trichostatin A. The optimal HDAC inhibitor depends on the cell type being used. The receptor control, in this case, the beta-2 adrenergic receptor, can be used to optimize the assay and serve as your positive control. In the CADIS kit, the agonist that activates the receptor control is isoproteranol. To complete the transduction mix, you will also need cell culture media, which is not provided in the kit. On day one of the experiment, the transduction will be performed. The first step of the protocol is to prepare the transduction mix. Please refer to your detailed protocol to find the recommended volumes of each reagent to be added. Keep in mind, however, that while the volumes recommended in the protocol are a good starting point, you may need to perform a titration of the sensor BACMAM stock to determine the amount that results in optimal assay performance. Next, we will trypsinize and prepare the cells, leaving them in suspension at the proper density. Finally, we will mix the transduction mix with the cells and plate the solution in a cell culture dish or microplate. The transduction mix typically consists of three to four components, the sensor BACMAM stock, the HDAC inhibitor, sodium butyrate, and cell culture media. A potential fourth component is the provided receptor control, we strongly encourage you to use the receptor control in your initial experiments, as this can be a useful tool in optimizing the assay. Because HEC293 cells have endogenous receptor that can be activated by isoproteranol, we will not be using the receptor control today. Another component that could be added to the transduction mix would be an additional sensor BACMAM stock. For example, a red calcium sensor to pair with green caddis. Mixing multiple baculoviruses works quite well. We can now move on to splitting our cells. We recommend transducing the cells while in suspension because this results in higher transduction efficiency and increased expression. However, you may also transduce adherent cells which would have been plated the day before the transduction. Now that we have our cells in suspension and our transduction mix, we can mix these two solutions and seed the cell culture dish or microplate. On a per well basis in a 96 well plate, 50 microliters of the transduction mix will be mixed with 100 microliters of cells, and therefore 150 microliters total of this mix will be added to each well. Our preferred plate type is the Griner Cell Coat 96 well plate with a poly D lysine coating. In choosing a plate, you want a black, clear-bottomed plate with low autofluorescence. It is also strongly recommended that the plate be coated with PDL or another cell coating agent that promotes cell adhesion. Montana Molecular's assays can also be set up in 3D4 well format. In addition to the transduced cells, it is extremely important to prepare a set of wells that contain a cells-only control. 
These wells will contain cells only and no fluorescent sensor and provide a critical comparison to the transduced cells. Specifically, they allow for calculating the signal to background, an important parameter in evaluating transduction efficiency and assay performance. For optimal assay performance, the transduced cells should give fluorescence values at least five-fold higher than the cells only control. After plating the complete transduction mix and cells only control, we cover the plate and let it sit in the hood for 30 minutes. It is then placed in the incubator until the time of the experiment. Approximately 24 hours post transduction, we are ready to move to the next phase of the protocol. We begin day two of the protocol by removing the cell culture media from the plate and adding DPBS. We recommend using an automated microplate washer to perform the media exchange. If this type of instrument is not available, the plate may be washed manually using a multi-channel pipette. However, special care must be taken to assure that the manual washing does not dislodge cells from the surface of the well. In either case, it is important to view the cells on a microscope after performing the media exchange. You should observe an even monolayer of bright fluorescent cells with high transduction efficiency. If cells have been dislodged during the plate washing process, the assay will not perform well, if at all. After allowing the plate to incubate at room temperature for 30 to 40 minutes, we are ready to begin the experiment. Montana Molecular's assays perform well on most fluorescence plate readers, such as the Biotech Synergy MX. Please refer to part two of the protocol video for instruction on plate reader setup and running an experiment.